This is Green is a New Black, a podcast by Oikos Lisbon. My name is Bea and I'm bringing you today's episode from my laptop so that we can socially distance. Hello everyone, today we have a special guest on the podcast who is Andre Gonsalves. Welcome Andre, thanks for being here with us today. Yeah. Andre is actually an alumni from NOVA since he studied his uh, postgraduate program at NOVA IMS, Information Management School, and has a broad background in consulting, having a lot of experience on the areas of strategy and innovation, project management and information technology, having also directed several projects in sectors like services, energy, retail, fashion and industry. However, We know that currently he's also volunteering for the non-profit organization Zero Desperdicio, which means zero waste in Portuguese, which is an NGO focused on preventing and reducing the generation of waste in all areas of industry, commerce and consumption. Could you tell us more about the journey and how this city brand was born? Yeah, so first of all, let me thank Oikos for the invitation to Daria Cordar Zer Desperdicio uh, for being here and representing what we do and trying to uh, explain it a bit better. Uh, so to give some overview and some context on what we do, uh, Zer Desperdicio was born more than 10 years ago as a citizen movement with a single goal to ensure that we created awareness for food waste that was happening in Portugal at that time and still does today. And uh, those group of citizens found out that they should be doing something to improve this. And the idea came up as to design a network that could recover food waste from uh, donors that had surplus like supermarkets, hotels, restaurants, cafeterias, uh, and then we could donate it to associations, IPSCS in Portugal, that could uh, actually uh, get them and then distribute them for the population that needed them. That's where we started, but uh, Zerge Perdicio has evolved and has done this journey in the last 10 years, and the goal today is First of all, to ensure that we have awareness in all the hierarchy of waste. So uh, the first way to avoid waste is to not producing it. So uh, the yes. first goal that we have is to have this awareness uh, so that people can understand what to produce, when to produce, are we producing it well. And this rationale doesn't only apply to food, that's where I have started, but now we are understanding that we have the means and the capabilities to uh, expand it to other areas, to other ways of um, ensuring that we have this operational model, the zero waste operational model in place uh, for several stakeholders. So this, is as, this has been the journey that we have been doing. We are really proud of what we have achieved. In the last years, we have uh, just in the food chain more than 50 million, uh, 15 million meals distributed. So wow. the numbers, the numbers are there, and I think the the mission and the vision are really relevant in today's world. So basically, that's been our journey so far. Wow, that's amazing. So now that we know a bit more about the background of CD. Let me ask you why the reduction of waste plays such a big role nowadays in our society and preservation of the environment and how Zero Desperdicio helps to achieve this goal. Yeah, um, that's, that's a really relevant question <laughs> to understand mm -hmm. uh, what's the role that we play today and what's the role of waste management, waste reduction nowadays. So if we look at some numbers and we did a study last year to understand a bit better the numbers. And when we look to uh, waste production, more than 11 million tons of waste are produced uh, just in 2018. That's the last year that we have some data. And just, just, just in one year? Just in uh, one so, year, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And from those, we can then split between urban and non-urban, but then when we look to uh, urban waste, that's mostly what we are talking about, uh, more than 50% 
doesn't have any sort of uh, valorization operations. I mean, uh, when you have some sort of waste, there are several things you can do. You can send it to the landfill. That's the worst possible way because you are not, you are just eliminating the, the, the waste and with all the consequences that has for the environment. And more than 50% still follows these. So we have a 50% space just within this sort of waste to do something different. And I feel that it's here that the, the, the idea of waste reduction, waste avoidance uh, enters. And I think there are several stakeholders that here can play uh, a role. From one hand, we have the society and here awareness is the key. Our society needs to know uh, of what type of numbers are we talking about? What type of actions are we talking about? What can we do different? From the other end, you have government, you have public policies. And there, there are also many things that uh, we can do. I think we have also time to, to talk about uh, public policies later on. Yeah. But uh, yeah. taking into account these uh, stakeholders, uh, our role today and what uh, Zerch Perdicio, Daria Cordar are doing for uh, this goal is mostly mm -hmm. to understand um, how can we settle this network, recovery network, not only for food, but for the textile industry as well. That's something that mm -hmm. we are already doing and starting to build our network also for the textile industry and mm -hmm. uh, to understand and to somehow uh, characterize who are the biggest players, how can we approach them, how can we ensure that they are doing the best they can do to avoid waste in every way. So we were part, we are just finishing uh, an international project called FORCE, Cities Cooperating for a Circular Economy. It's an Horizon 2020 uh, funded project that we are doing with other players in, in Portugal and others abroad in the European Union. And great part of our work has been towards this awareness, not only for society, but also for major corporations, some small and medium enterprises that are actually the ones that can act and can do something. We are a network, we try to provide solutions, but in the end, the final actions are on these players' side. So what we can do is to show them these numbers, to make sure that they know what we are talking about, that they know uh, what's their role, what they can do, how they can do. That's also something really interesting that we have been working on. There are some uh, procedures that we have developed. For instance, how can you move food in a safely manner to ensure quality and to ensure that uh, no issues arise from those transportations. There are protocols that you should follow and there are procedures that you can do. And we have also been working towards that to design some of these procedures, of course, with help from experts on the area and uh, that can give us all the insights that we need. But we have, working, we have been working towards that. And some of those are published within the European Union so that everyone can follow these procedures. And one last point that we have been doing is to ensure that we have our replication guide. Imagine someone in uh, other foreign country in Europe or outside Europe wants to mm -hmm. settle something like this. We have already designed a replication guide that they can follow mm -hmm. and they can uh, bring that information, bring our experience, our lessons learned and implement within their cities, within their countries and so on. So we have been oh, working. Yeah, it, it's really interesting because then uh, we can standardize the way we speak about this because there are many doubts. There are many things that are not yeah. clear and we can ensure that uh, everything is working in the same way. And mm -hmm. um, to support this replication guide, we have developed uh, what we call the Zero Waste app. So we have mm -hmm. a, a web 
uh, website, a web platform that we have developed in which we can insert all the information to ensure traceability, to ensure that we can know exactly at what time, at what moment in the year we have donations from which players, where these, do these things flow, which is something really important because like uh, in, in nowadays, many people talk about transparency, ensuring that we know uh, where do the funds come from, uh, what are yeah. people doing with the information that they have. So we really want to promote this transparency, and that's why we have developed these. The results are published within our website. We have some analytics there with the, with the data that we collect. And we want to keep improving that to ensure that we have this transparency, that we are showing the results, we are showing good practices, uh, which in the end can turn into policies, can turn into procedures. So we try to have this full life cycle of uh, zero waste mindset, so to say. Going back to the topic of circular economy that I think you mentioned before, I would like to ask you if you could elaborate a bit more on how these principles are actually implemented in the CDS projects and how, how all this relates to the circular economy concept. Yeah, we, we see ourselves as a, a circular economy and as a, a collaborative platform in which we can ensure that all players are actually working towards circular economy. Because in the end, what is circular economy? It's to avoid that things uh, go to the end of their life cycle. It's to keep things within the life cycle. It's to ensure that um, all the potential waste, all the materials, all the things that we produce keep within this circle. So if we look at these, that's exactly what we have been doing in the food chain and we want to replicate with the textile chain. So basically, uh, we work mostly towards circular economy and it's really interesting to see that uh, the concepts of circular economy have been more mainstream or broadcasted in the last two, three, four years. And we have been doing this in the last 10, 15 years. And uh, when nobody talked about circular economy, I think it was really interesting to understand uh, that um, Zerch Prodicius started this work uh, towards this collaboration and to ensure that uh, things kept within the, the, the life cycle and we avoid landfill and we avoid things to going to the end of this life cycle. So when we look at these circular economy concepts, uh, uh, we can see that uh, we can keep uh, the circularity within the within the the every chain. And uh, uh, there there is a, a study done by a, a Portuguese group last year about the potential circularity of the several chains and. Uh, we, we can see that there are many areas in which circularity has a lot of potential and we are not there yet, which means that there are many things that we could do. We kick-started some of them, but then there are many initiatives uh, in Portugal and, and uh, in other countries uh, that are working towards this. So I think circular economy and sustainability will be the words that we will listen for the next 10, 15 years, because indeed we need to ensure that um, we have a sustainable environment for the next generation. So uh, it should start now. It should have already uh, has started, but it needs to start now. So I believe that we are doing uh, our work towards this. Definitely. And then there is one last uh, thing that I would like to underline also within the, the, the circular economy, that it's about... Mm -hmm the business models. Uh, we mm -hmm. see ourselves as also a circular slash sustainable business model. Our goal as we are an NGO is always of course to not have profits, but um, mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see. And for me that uh, I've been working at consulting firms as well, it's really interesting to see how an NGO uh, that usually don't have a lot of maturity in terms of awareness on uh, business models, awareness of how economy works, how uh, enterprises work, how associations work, 
it's really interesting mm -hmm. to see that we have been working towards having this sustainable business model in which we don't need to live just by grants. You have many associations in Portugal that live a lot from grants, from donations. And our goal is also to have this sustainable business model in which we can uh, feed ourselves uh, every time with the resources that we have. So to ensure that we don't need grants, we don't need this type of funding, we have our own sustainable business model that we can use to promote sustainability, to ensure that we have resources like uh, we manage the network uh, countrywide every day, including islands with more than a thousand donors and receivers. So we need resources for that. Uh, and in that sense, uh, yeah, for sure, we need to have this sustainable business model uh, so that we can keep uh, having the best resources, we can keep evolving, we can keep uh, giving our contribution back to the country. So I would say that's where we stand in terms of circular economy. Mm -hmm. And in terms of what can be done on the individual level, what tips could you give our listeners to apply these rules of circular economy in their daily routines and improve their environmental practices to achieve a more sustainable and zero waste lifestyle? I think circular economy starts from within. So we need to understand our own individual actions and only then we are ready to start having this organizational mindset and evolving more towards, towards that. So I think that Practical tips can start from understanding, are we buying something that we really need? Are we uh, giving away something that can have a second or a third life uh, mm -hmm. or not? And if we ask these type of questions every time we have uh, any sort of uh, purchase moment or any sort of handling with uh, eventual waste, we can then take the best course of action. So uh, practically speaking, I would say that uh, we need to understand every time we are buying or selling or getting away of something, we should ask ourselves if we really need that, if there is someone else that could benefit from that that we haven't thought of. And in the end, is just to ensure that we are not throwing away something that can be useful for other persons or other organizations. And I think this also uh, needs some sort of creativity because many times there are things that we feel that uh, they are not worth it. We cannot do something with that. And there is always someone that can do something with that. So, uh, and we have many examples in our society from the ones that we see people collecting plastic from the oceans and then do art uh, installations from uh, things in our uh, daily lives in which we can use uh, clothes that uh, were meant to dress, but then we don't want it then anymore and we can do something different with them. Uh, those type of actions always comes from when we ask, is there anything else I can do with this instead of throwing it away? So I would go mostly towards that. Yeah, like just applying the four R's, right? Like reducing, reuse, recycle, and then recover. Like it all makes sense in the end. Yeah. And also for anyone who speaks Portuguese and is interested in learning more about uh, this whole topic um, regarding circular economy, I really encourage you to check out the webinars recorded by Cyril uh, Desperdicio around this topic. Uh, available on their YouTube channel that uh, we will leave um, the link below in the episode's description so that you can check it out. <laughs> okay, so moving forward, um, I've heard that Cerro Desperdicio uh, has placed one of its containers on our campus to make it easier for um, Nova SB students to recycle their clothes at uni, right? Uh, could you explain to us um, a little bit more about how it works um, if it is just meant to be for clothes or also for shoes. Um, I don't know, do they, do they have to be in a good condition or uh, can, can we also throw broken clothes, for example, or I don't know, any other type of fabrics in general? 
Okay, so uh, just just to add some some minor detail or not so minor, the initiative mm -hmm. to have a container is from Nova SBE. We, mm -hmm. uh, as Zerch Perdicio, usually don't have containers on our own because, as I was as I was explaining, we manage a network with several players, and some of our players are the ones that actually own these type of things and Nova mm -hmm. SBE has been a partner for Zero Desperdice a long time and mm -hmm. uh, when we heard that they were placing a container in the university to collect clothes we thought mm, we should do something there is uh, mm -hmm. things that we can do and we are working towards the textile value chain so uh, for sure we could partner and we challenged mutually between Zerch Perdicio and Nova SVE. And uh, we came up with the conclusion that, okay, uh, Nova SVE will have a container to collect mostly clothes in a good state. So something that can be used for a third party for someone else. So again, this concept of circular economy of the life cycle that doesn't end. And that's the motto for, for this project. And we realized like Nova has placed the container there. Uh, we are working towards having um, impact measurement for these. And we have our platform in which we can record everything. So we could build a project towards that. And we gathered several players here. We have on one hand, Nova SV with its university campus and the container. We have uh, Zerch Perdicio working on this uh, impact measurement side. And then we have uh, Centro Parroquial de Carcavelos that will collect these clothes in distributing towards uh, the population of the region. And on top of these, we also have the partnership from Oiku side, which I believe it will be really relevant here to ensure awareness of the project towards the campus. So having these four partners together, the idea is to produce a project that can have meaningful impact in the university and in the campus and that uh, we are working towards uh, promoting sustainability in the textile chain, ensuring that every student that has uh, something in their homes that they feel that they will not use it anymore, there is always someone that can do something with these. It could be wear them in a second life. It could be produce something different, to upcycle them in another piece of clothes, to uh, create a, something that is not a piece of cloth, but born from that uh, fabric. So uh, the idea is that we have the container there. People can deposit the things that they have uh, on that container. Then mm -hmm. Centro Parroquial will collect it um, and with our help, we will uh, measure the impact of having these, measuring mm -hmm. everything that is happening there, and also mm -hmm. to ensure this transparency that I was talking in the in uh, earlier in our conversation. That is, I am uh, putting something on the container, but after some. Uh, moments, some days, some weeks, I will know the impact of that. I will know why is that happening? What is the next stage of uh, uh, the things that I'm putting on the container? So that's our goal with this project. I think it's an ambitious project. I think it's somehow innovator because we are uh, bringing these four parties together and we are complementing each other with our experiences in the ways that we work. And we can, end, in the end, say we have recycled, upcycled, doing whatever we will do with the, with the things that we have in the container. And we can say, look, there is X amount of pieces, X tons of pieces of cloth that we have recycled. We have saved X tons of uh, CO2 emissions for the country. Uh, the, there are X liters of water that we will save by not producing this type of clothes. So in the end, we will be able to show the impact of the project towards the community. And that's, the, for me, the most interesting thing that uh, we will have with this project. So yeah, really ambitious project. And I think it will be yeah. uh, really successful. Sounds really interesting, very ambitious, but we'll see how, how it goes, hopefully well. <laughs> yeah. And and now going back to the to the topic that we were 
um, discuss about policies, regulations, and individual actions. Um, I wanted to ask you, how is the waste management treated on the government level here in Portugal? And if you think uh, there are enough policies to regulate it or if there should be more and, and also if the process is actually efficient or, or not, like what do you think um, about all this? Okay, so despite not being a fully expert on regulation, there are some insights that I can give. I think from one end we were talking about uh, sustainability starting from within, but if we can have at the government level, at the public policies level, some incentives towards that, then we will join uh, the two major forces to make things happen, the individual efforts and the collective efforts. So in this sense, um, I would say that uh, in Portugal and in the European Union, we are increasing our efforts to have uh, sustainable uh, waste management policies. Um, we have still uh, many things to do and there are uh, a huge work to be done, but I think we are doing the, the right steps and the, the steps towards having a better process for um, waste management. I can give you an example. There is um, a public policy from the European Union that says that until the beginning of 2025, the municipalities have to have their um, processes to deal with waste management at the textile level. So what does this mean? This means that municipalities will be the ones taking care of these processes, part like what we are doing with this project with the container. It doesn't mean that we will have a container for clothes, probably not, but it means that we are creating awareness and we are uh, ensuring that municipalities play a role here and they create awareness towards the citizens to have these sort of uh, practices and good practices towards waste management. So I would say that uh, we already have some policies. Um, most of them are regulation things that you can or you should or you must do. Otherwise, you will pay some sort of uh, taxes or you pay some... Um, things that uh, to compensate the, the actions that you have. But then uh, we have public regulations that we can still apply. And we have good examples in all Europe uh, towards this. So the plastic within the packaging, the, mm -hmm. uh, the sustainable packaging that you can do, uh, the, the incentives to uh, donating surplus of your food or your textile within a supermarket, within an hotel, a cafeteria, and so on. So uh, there are these sort of regulations that uh, we can still work towards too. Um, so I think we are doing the, the, the best we can uh, to, in order to make it efficient. When you start implementing these uh, regulations, you will never be fully efficient in the beginning. And I think we are under this adaptive process to understand how can we do this and then how can we do this efficiently. So I think those are the, the things that we need to work towards. And who do you think has the biggest power to fight uh, this massive generation of waste? Like, would you rather say it is the government through public regulations or, or more um, uh, the people like with our individual daily actions? That's an interesting question. I would say that from one end, of course, government has a, a, a role to play here with regulation and with awareness and to ensure that uh, we are working towards this. But then the individuals, the citizens slash consumers also have a key role to play because we as consumers can demand more from brands, from companies, because we are the ones that buy from them. So, for instance, if the citizens starting to have more sustainable behaviors, they can start to demand more from companies. They can say, no, no, I will only uh, buy from 
companies that have these sustainable behaviors. And then we are putting pressure towards corporations, towards small and medium companies. So uh, this means that um, it's a, a, a responsibility that is spread to, to different players. But in the end, I would say government for sure. And then uh, the corporations based on the pressure that citizens can do towards it. So we as an individuals also have a role to play. Uh, it's not enough to say we will just wait for the government or for companies to do something. We as individuals can also do something to create this awareness, to force uh, things to happen. So uh, if we look at the Archperdicio, that's what we did in the beginning. There were no sort of network towards this. And the citizens said, well, we should play a role here. And mm -hmm. the Archperdicio was born. So um, I think individuals um, also have a big uh, impact here and the power that we shouldn't ignore. And... And now that you're uh, mentioning Cerro Desperdicio, like what is your sort of 20 years? Like where, where do you see the, the company there? Well, it's really hard to uh, <laughs> envision something in 10 years. The world will be fully different in 10 years. Like mm -hmm. one year ago, if someone told us that we would face a pandemic, we would never believe it. So probably there are True. challenges that will happen and will take place in the next 10 years that can change the landscape. But mm -hmm. the way I see uh, Zerch Perdicium is for us to keep working towards building these uh, zero waste movement, zero waste network, not only in the food chain, also in the textile chain. And there, there are many others that we are really keen to work, the plastics, the energy, the sea, uh, there are many areas in which uh, Zerch Perdicio can play a key role, uh, like we can also start and we will work towards human competences, like how much waste do we have in human competences, like the landscape is changing, the, the things that we demand from people are different every year, so probably there's something that we can do here uh, towards human competences, so the way I see Zerch Perdicio in five years to be more fair than 10 years probably uh it's mm -hmm. to expand our action to other um to other chains and also mm -hmm. to, to increase our positioning to increase the awareness mm -hmm. that we develop to start working more and more with uh public uh, um, institutions to uh, develop these policies to ensure that uh, we are working towards this zero waste mindset as a whole. So that's mm -hmm. where I see Zerch Perdicio. Okay. So we're almost at the end of the interview, but uh, before signing off, I wanted to ask you a following question, um, which is related to the previous question uh, so are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future of our world in terms of sustainable development well i'm always optimistic not only mm -hmm. about sustainable development but almost everything in life but i would say that sustainable development will be the key for our success in the key for future generations so there are many things that we are doing at individual, national, world level. Uh, we have the Green Deal that the European Union is working towards. We have several public projects in Portugal and abroad towards sustainable development. We have the sustainable development goals. So there are uh, many things that are happening and economy will change according to sustainable development. Even the models about uh, economy and how economy plays, we have now the donut economy explaining as you really to take into account the sustainable level and the economy should also aim for sustainability. So I'm quite optimistic that sustainability will be uh, one of the things that we really will take into account for uh, ourselves as an individuals and for the organizations as a whole. So uh, I'm quite sure that 
if we have this conversation in 10 years, many things will have improved uh, about sustainable development, but many challenges will arise in the meantime. So it's mm -hmm. always an iterative process in which we solve something and then something new appears and we solve it and we will uh, do this incrementally until we end in a better version of ourselves. So I'm really optimistic about this and I'm quite sure that we'll be able to achieve uh, some of the goals that uh, we want. Yeah, we'll see. Let's hope, let's hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all uh, that it's left, right? Just just having hope. <laughs> so, yeah, hope, um... <laughs> hope, hope. Let, let me just, let me just add yeah. this. Hope, hope is uh, a great motto, but... In yeah. top of hope, we really need to have action. So hope action without action. Action and take action, the initiative. It's Definitely. solely a, a dream. So if we want our dreams to come true, we need to move from hope to action. And I think that's a good motto for sustainable development. Yeah, totally agreed indeed. <laughs> so Andre, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. And thank you to our listeners and stay tuned for the next episode of Green Senior Black. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That was Green is a New Black. Thank you for listening and we'll see you in the next episode.